one of the things that absolutely pisses me off most is when I buy a band from any manufacturer and they misgrind the weld. This is incredibly important. Most people don't even realize how important it is. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Hey folks, Robert Milton coming back at you from Hobby Hardwood. It's good to see y'all again. Today you'll notice the sawmill is open again. I'm gonna show you some pretty valuable tips on checking the set of your saw blade using a set checker tool. For that, I'm gonna saw up some uh, rainbow poplar though, and uh, it's gonna be beautiful stuff, I think. If you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, stuff like that. Just look what a good band will do when you're sawing. Look at how little sawdust on this board. Almost not, almost not enough to wipe off. Look at that. That's when things are going right. Here's, here's what they look like. Now, ain't that just gorgeous? Look at this. It just doesn't get any prettier than that. That's mother nature doing that. All right, so this little beastie is called a set checker gauge. All teeth on a band have an up tooth, a down tooth, and a neutral tooth. And if you look real close, let's see if I can see it. I'm not sure I'll be able to get it in here. You can see here's an up, there's a neutral, there's a down, All right? And the, the distance that those little guys are pointed down and up should be consistent and the same on both sides. Sometimes though, you need to check the set of your band. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So this is what this guy looks like. Call 1-800-O-Woodmiser. I need you to take some of my money. First thing I have to do is set the zero on it. As you go to a neutral tooth, you put the gauge on top of it, slide it over, open up the clamp a little bit, slide it over and put that tooth directly. And put that indicator directly on that tooth. Then you take this little guy and you zero it out. It's extremely important that you do it on a neutral tooth. It's also extremely important that you do it on both sides of the same tooth. You notice there's just a, about a thousandth of an inch difference. I'm gonna split the middle, try it again. I mean, it does take a second to get this thing right, but when it's right, it's right. All right, now what we wanna do is let's find an up tooth. Pull this out, there's an up tooth. Or a down tooth. There's a down tooth right here. Pull this back. You notice how I'm setting the little dial indicator right in the center. Now let's look at the set. We're right at 25 thousandths. Let's check another down tooth. Here happens to be one. And again, we are right at 25 thousandths. All right, now what we need to do is check an up tooth. There's an up right there. Ow, mm, that hurt. There's an up tooth right there. Slide this guy on. 
centered up just like the other one. And I'm at 25,000. See how that works? Let's go check another one. Here's another one. Right there. And guess what? We are at 25 thousandths. This is a perfect band. Properly set and properly sharpened. So One of the reasons it's so bad to pack sawdust is if you assume you only have 25 thousandths of an inch of clearance between the up tooth and the band or the down tooth and the band, if you get 25 thousandths or if you get 26 thousandths of sawdust in there, then that sawdust causes the band, the body of the man, to drive. It, it touches the back. Look how easy it is to flex. It kind of builds up back here, builds up there, and next thing you know, you got an airplane wing. And that is why you cut curves if you have too much sawdust. Anyway, that's how you check the set on your band. Very important. The air conditioning has been turned on. It's cold again out here. So, I did that set checking on the band before, and it was amazingly tight. If you've ever tried to set your own bands, most people shoot for two to three thousandths. I try to shoot for always less than one. It's extremely difficult. And then I'm given a production band that's well under a thousandths, maybe a half a thousandths on multiple teeth. As I was making the video, I said, this band is perfect, but it, I hadn't checked everything yet. So I was a little premature on that. So I woke up in the middle of the night, thought about that and said, yeah, I need to go back. If I'm going to call a band a perfect band, by golly, <laughs> I'm going to make sure it's perfect. So now I'm going to show you how to check the weld on a band. The weld is extremely important. It's not unusual for a band manufacturer after they weld a band together. All bands have a weld joint um, after they weld a band together to have a heat affected zone that is more brittle than the rest of the band. That's normal in welding. So uh, there's also some weld buildup. So the manufacturer is required to do a couple things. They have to post heat treat or otherwise stress relieve the weld and kneel it to get it to the same approximate properties as a bandsaw blade. That way it does not crack under brittle fracture conditions, cycling around and around and around. You don't want your bands to crack in the weld. That's typically an indicated manufacturing process issue. I can't run the band long enough right now to see if it's going to brittle fracture, but I have run the band long enough uh, yesterday to know this bad boy is sawing like a laser beam. It's fast, it's flat, leaving almost no sawdust. This is about to be, one more check, a perfect pan. So the next thing I gotta do is I gotta check the weld. Now the weld should be flat. One of the things that absolutely pisses me off most is when I buy a band from any manufacturer and they misgrind the weld. You probably could go out to your bands right now and feel them. They're going to hollow out the weld, which means that the weld is now thinner than the band. Well, gee, that's not going to work. Or they don't grind it enough so that the weld is higher. It's proud of the band. Either way, you can always tell when you're running these bands because it's going across the metal band wheels that weld's going to sound like a train coming down a track, right? Chicka, 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 chicka. Hey, I got some rhythm right there, right? You can put on a good band with a properly ground weld and you can hear it in the first five seconds. You know it's right. So I know this one's right because I can hear it. But I wanted to show you another way to test it. And this is how you do it. It's actually pretty straightforward. You find, you find a light. You put a straight edge. It's got to be on the mill because again, you got to take the curvature out of the band. You put it on the mill, you lay a straight edge on top of it, you put a light behind it. 
if there's any misgrind of the weld, you're going to see light coming under the weld or somewhere else on the band. If you can't see any light, that means that level is sitting straight on that band and that weld is a good one. So we're going to check this guy. I got my light. <laughs> there's the weld, right? Can't miss it. You can see where the grind marks are and everything, right? I'm going to put this straight edge right on the weld, set her down. I'm going to put the light behind it and shine it right behind it. And you'll notice there is no light coming between the weld and the band. I don't know if you can see this or not. But anyway, that's how you check it. This is a simulation of a bad weld. Notice I got two sunglasses, two glasses on, so I'm concentrating. Um, simulation. You put the light behind it and you can easily see daylight. See that? Between the level and the band. See that streak? Let me slow that down. Shit. See that streak right there? That would indicate a poorly ground weld. It says something that in order for me to demonstrate a poorly ground weld, I have to simulate it on this band. When I rub my finger over that, I almost cannot feel it. I mean, it's just dead smooth. Um, it's that good. So this band gets my Hobby Hardwood sign of approval. Go to your band, the bands you're using. Rub your finger over the weld and see if you can feel it. If it ain't flat, you still may cut flat wood, but it's gonna break prematurely. It's gonna drive you nuts when you hear it running on the sawmill like an old freight train and it means that your band quality could be improved. So call up your manufacturer and bend their ear. I will say it. I don't say it very often. This band is perfect. So you're probably gonna wonder where I get my bands from. As I've said before many times, if, if they were better, I'd be using them. There aren't. The guy's name is Joe Main. He works at ICT. He is in Georgia. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Please like, please subscribe, please give me the old thumbs up, and I will keep this content coming. We will see y'all later. Bye. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.